Patrick, I can't thank you enough for being such a great test subject. As you can see, you know, the problem we've got is when you're trying to collect data, particularly physical data, it, you harass whether good friends yeah. Or, yeah. or the wildlife. So we're really looking for ways to collect biological data without harassing the animals. And here comes our drones we affectionately call Snotbot. Well, the harassment on my own person was modest compared to what creatures can experience when uh, uh, bona fide scientists are doing their research. That's right. And what we're looking at here is one, two, three, four drones and their controllers, actually five, because there's a little, oh, there it is, there it a is, little yeah. tiny one with the camera on the front. Um, what's going on here? Well, again, what we want to do is collect this physical data with no harassment. And what's fascinating, with both humans and whales, the respiratory tract, you know, our breathing, is, is a key component to vectoring mm -hmm. disease and stuff. So believe it or not, if we can fly a drone into a whale's below, or what we call snot, hover about 12 foot above the animal, we can collect all this biological data. You've got DNA, stress hormones, pregnancy hormones, mm. viruses, bacteria, and the whale won't even know we're there. And, and until the development of the drones, how was this data collected, if it was collected at all? And what was it that stressed the creatures? Right. Well, there were two things. One, I hate to say it, we'd actually biopsy the animal. Now, they, these animals are the size of a school bus, but mm -hmm. it's not really non-invasive. The animal knows you were there. And one of the things that you're, you're looking for particularly is the existence of stress exactly. evidence in, in this data that you're going to collect. Why is stress so important to understand in terms of uh, uh, a creature like a whale? Right. Well, the f you know, I say we live on planet ocean, not on planet Earth. And I think the future of humanity is our oceans. We're going to do more and more in the oceans. Everything we're doing on the land, we're going to be doing in the oceans. So mm. we need to find a way to work in harmony with the biological ecosystem that, that are our oceans. Mm. So by collecting stress hormones from whales, you can say, you know what? What we just did does not stress them. Yeah. We might think it is. There's a word we tend to use a lot, anthropomorphic. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's human effects. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, you know, some of the things we think of may have no effect at all, and some of them we can't even imagine do. But collecting the stress hormone, you can say, you know, we, we know the animal was not affected nor cared about that. And am I right, furthermore, not only are you finding out more about the individual whale itself, its condition, its stress level, its general health. But because you're getting that information from a creature that lives in the oceans, you're also finding out a lot about the ocean itself. Exactly, exactly. I mean, we call them, people like to call them apex predators, or in Britain we call them the canary in the coal mine. I mean, I'm a great believer that what happens to the whale will happen to humanity. So if only from our own self-interest, we need to learn more about these animals. And as you've done with us today, we need to encourage this type of research. You know, we need to push the boundaries a little bit. We need to be a pathfinder and get out there. And, yeah. you know, we have half a dozen things that we hope these will do, but I'm sure there will be discoveries we couldn't even have thought mm. by, by taking this and step. And this is only possible by the very recent, very new development of this technology. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's moving very fast. So what we're hoping will happen with this campaign that you're supporting is that we'll raise enough money to go to three locations for very, very different species of whales. Where are they, those locations? Well, I'd like Patagonia, because the southern right whale, the right whale is a very endangered species of great whale, and it, it's a sort of a krill feeder. I'd like to go to the Sea of Cortez with sperm whales. Where you, I've that's been right. With you there. You've worked with us in the Sea of Cortez, and I'd like to go up to Alaska with humpback whales. Ah. So, but think about this. Typically, if you had a big expedition and planes and boats, millions of dollars, we can have a small kit, go out, you know, Argentina, Sea of Cortez, you know. And you've so, said that in some cases you'll actually be able to fly these things from the land. You actually won't need to be on a boat. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's the great thing about it. I mean, cost is important. Yeah, I mean, there's true. more willing scientists out there than there are funds available. And I actually think soon this technology will reach a almost a citizen science level where we can have other people going out and collecting data for us. Uh, like uh, the way in Britain recently, uh, 
the, the people of Britain were asked to do their own bird survey. Right, right. And so many thousands cooperated in this that suddenly there was a picture of the, the bird population of the United Kingdom. That's right. Do, assembled by amateurs, essentially right. enthusiasts. So I just want to, just briefly, because I know we don't have much time, want to look at this magnificent item here. Um, how is the snot box actually going to work? Where will it be? Well, I think what's different actually is if we start at the top, you see what we've done with the students from Olin College is we've created a totally waterproof drone. There are lots of drones you can buy out there, but they're not snot proof, they're not water resistant. The engines we may have to replace after a while, but it's a waterproof drone. And then with that wonderful technology that is rapid prototyping, we're 3D printing our own collection programs. You know, we have a Petri dish and we can mount a Petri dish underneath here. Yeah. Or we have sterile sponges, we can mount the sponges. Which will soak up the, Which will the soak snot. Up the snot. That's right. And the plan literally is to sort of hover above the snot. It's not one brief moment through. And when you're hovering above the animal, we'll get photographs of the animal. You know, so there's a camera on this as well? Exactly. Oh, there's well, a camera for because the... Because this, this little guy here, this one, that's also right. has a camera That's right. and takes photos. Yeah, this really is the future. But yeah. for example, Sunny, our drone that you supported, um, actually has a camera in the front here, waterproof, right. and right. it can tilt down right. and up. So, I mean, it's really remarkable, but clearly we need people to get behind this campaign, support us, and sort of get us out, I wouldn't say into the field, or onto the oceans. Well, that last remark is what all of this is about. Ocean Alliance needs supporters. It needs financial support, as well as the enthusiastic support who believe that the oceans and the creatures in them are worth securing for the future. Right. So any of you who are watching this and feel that you would like to support Ian Kerr and Ocean Alliance, you are supporting a wonderful organization that actually operates extraordinarily economically. I know because I've sailed with them uh, how economic they really are and the work that they do is outstanding and will make this planet, ocean, <laughs> a better place for us to live and swim. Thank you my friend. Thank you. Really appreciate it.